Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're wrapping up our five-day look at Psalm 139 with verses 17 through 24 and a simple request to search us and know our hearts. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, That is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at Psalm 139, verses 17 through 24, which read, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I had nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, as we wrap up this five-day look that we've been on in Psalm 139, the last two, there, there are multiple parts, but right now I really just want to talk about the last two verses of our psalm. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, oftentimes we hesitate to want to say something like this to God. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And friends, as always, I am speaking from my own personal experience and sharing with you because this was a big struggle point for me. And I believe that it is a struggle point for a lot of others, even those of us who really want to walk in the way everlasting, right? Who really want to, to, oh goodness, who really desire to be in alignment with God's will for our life, who really desire to walk out the purpose that he created us for. Sometimes this right here can be a bit of a stumbling block for us because we are afraid to invite him in to clean out some of that yuck that really needs to be cleaned out. And there are a lot of different reasons for that, depending on what your particular brand of yuck is. (laughs) There can be um, certainly guilt involved in it, shame involved in it. There can be a whole slew of, I want to call them negative emotions. And I know that that's not always a popular way to describe emotions because emotions simply are, right? But there can just be a lot of difficulty tied into opening up and allowing God to search your heart, to know your anxious thoughts, to see if there is any offensive way in you 
and to allow him to clear that out. Because sometimes, friends, that can be a painful process. Sometimes that means you have to let go of people. And sometimes that means you have to let go of things. You have to let go of habits. You have to let go of thought patterns. You have to let go of the old ways. You have to let go of the things that you have clung to that have created your version of your identity in your mind and in your heart. But friends, oftentimes those ways are not the ways that we are to be walking. Oftentimes those are the offensive ways. And we have to not only open ourselves up and allow God to clean that out, but then we have to begin walking in a new way. I heard somewhere, I don't remember if it was on a movie or a YouTube video. I have no idea where I heard this, but it was something to the effect of change is easy. Transition is difficult. The decision to make change is simply that. It is the decision. Once it's made, it's made. It's a decision. It's done. That's the change. This is what needs to be done. However, to actually see that change come to fruition, we must undergo a transformation. There must be a transition. There must be transformation. There must actually be a change in behavior, in thoughts, in patterns, so that we can have the change in outcome that we decided we wanted. And sometimes, friends, that can be the most difficult thing because we don't want to relinquish control. We want to hold on to the control. And so... I'm going to come back to that in just a minute, but to support, I want to go back up to the beginning of our passage for today. As David is, is exclaiming, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God, how vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Friends. I understand the fear that can arise when you decide you want to maybe think about saying, search me, oh God, and know my heart. (laughs) But as we've already talked about, and as the beginning of our passage today reminds us, God already knows. We are not capable of understanding the full breadth and depth and just we're not actually capable of comprehending the vastness of our God. We are the creation. We are not the creator. Okay. The creation never understands everything about the creator. Think about your kids if you have them. Your kids know you, but do they know everything about you? Do they know your thoughts? Do they know the reasons why you do everything that you do? Do they know everything that you've ever done? No. And we don't tell them that stuff. So it is with us. We will never have full understanding because we're not God. But friends, what I want for you to focus on today is the vast capacity that God has in the ways of compassion, in the ways of love, in the ways of grace, in the ways of mercy. David cries out, oh, if you would only slay the wicked, oh God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. 
sometimes we really, sometimes I think that um, it would be easy for us to say, God, would you please just get rid of all of the evil stuff in this world? Could you please just, you know, could you please get rid of the wicked? All of the things that cause us harm, you know, all of the things that, that have evil intent, everyone and everything that doesn't walk in your name. That is a selfish human perspective and request. <laughs> because God is a God of redemption. And friends, if everyone, if everyone walked around here perfectly, then what would be the point? We're not there yet. That comes next. So friends, and Dave, and David goes right in to search me, oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. It's easy for us to have negative, unpleasant, difficult thoughts about others, about other things, other people, other places, other situations, all of the things when, when we feel like we're under attack. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Know what's at the core of me. Know what I am made of, even if sometimes I struggle to show it outwardly. Know what's on the inside of me. Know my heart, O oh God. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Friends, when we have anxiety, worry, fear, and doubt, that is a red flag. It's an indicator for us to turn and lay them down. Worry, fear, doubt don't come from the Lord. Anxiety doesn't come from the Lord. We are told over and over and over again throughout Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, do not worry, do not fear. I am the Lord your God. So as we feel fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, we can know that it didn't come from God and we can use that as an opportunity to say, hang on a second and take it to the Lord. David closes the psalm with, See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, that is an invitation. These last two verses, they are an invitation, and one that I, I hope and I pray you will extend today. And every day, really, this is something that we should be in the and the habit of doing is asking God to search us, to know us, to test us, to see if there is any offensive way in us. And if there is, to show us how to correct it. Maybe it's a habit that needs to be changed. Maybe it's a mistake that requires repentance. Maybe you need to have a different conversation. Maybe you need to move away from a group of people. Whatever it is, friends, seek the Lord's guidance on it. Seek him first and then be obedient in what he tells you to do. Allow him to lead you in the way everlasting. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today, y'all. It is such a joy and a blessing to be here with you, and I am so grateful each and every day that God allows me to do this one more time. So friends, um, thank you for being here. I invite you to come back and join me for our next episode. Since we have wrapped up 139, Psalm 139, we're going to take a quick little look over at Psalm 141 verses 3 and 4 and how important it is for us to watch our words. Until then. 
Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.